Office. The Office is a hit TV series based on the antics of office manager Michael Scott. In this show, we will describe the day-to-day -day operations of the workplace. Different characters such as Jim, Dwight, and Stanley all have different work ethics and ways about going through their day. By analyzing different behaviors and following Michael's managerial style, we better understand which concepts of management should be implemented and which should not. Eventually, Janet, Michael's boss, comes to take charge, but her appearance are random at best. Following the crazy antics and pranks around the office, behind Michael, Michael's back gives us a better insight of how his employees do not respect him. This also shows a lack of Michael's managerial management skills. Now let's go over some of the characters at the office. First, we have Michael Scott. Michael Scott's the boss of the office. He acts as the regional manager of Dunder Mifflin Paper Company and has a horrible managerial mentality when it comes to running the office. Then there's Jim Holper. He's the office funny guy, is very well liked by his co-workers and takes the job day by day. He performs all of his tasks but never really goes above and beyond for anything. And then there's Pam Beasley. She's the office sweetheart. She's a receptionist at Dunder Mifflin Incorporated and is in a romantic relationship with Jim. Of course, the office would not be the same without Dwight. He's considered the nerd of the office. He is a very hard worker and a t top sales agent at Dunder Mifflin. Takes his job very seriously and is very easy to irritate. Oftentimes, the office pranks are at Dwight's expense. Then there's Janet. She's considered the big boss, the person directly in charge of Michael. She is rarely seen and has most of the authority. Often does not care about others as long as she gets paid. She is here to ensure sales and relationships with customers are following growth patterns. And then finally, there's Stanley, the one at the office who does not care about anything. He has a bad work, work ethic and is often ignores orders and commotion that goes on around him. He is there just to fulfill his 8 to 5 role at the office and complains often. Stanley is not a big fan of his boss, Michael, as he thinks he is racist. Now let's go over some concepts for our TV episodes. Some managerial concepts that you are going to learn are the following. Team Scranton's mission is to teach management skills to our viewers through comedy and entertainment. Here are some important management concepts our production team will cover in our episodes. Some include management terminology, management techniques, code of ethical conduct, planning, teamwork, attitude towards work, and negotiation. Episode 1 Pilot A documentary crew arrives at the Dunder Mufflin Paper Company to observe the employees and to film some modern management at the office. Corporate makes manager Michael Scott aware of possible downsizing with Dunder Mifflin. The episodes show a little insight of how each character acts. A few managerial concepts introduced in this episode is the complex organi organizational structure of the office and, a, and the various roles assumed by the workplace hierarchy. What we have learned from this episode Code of Ethical Conduct. In this episode, you can see that Michael Scott is lacking appropriate ethical conduct in the workplace. Some of these include foul language that had to be edited out and when he answers the rep's call on speakerphone. Another management concept we captured in this episode is the attitudes towards work. This was captured when Dwight approaches Jim and taps him on the shoulder to play a joke. While this might not look like a big deal, this isn't the behavior that should be in the workplace when upper management is around. It looks as if Dwight does not take his job seriously and he is there just to goof around. Now let's take a look at episode 2.
Episode 2 Diversity Day The manager Michael Scott does a controversial imitation of Chris Rock routine at the office. This causes the staff to forego a racial diversity seminar with a consultant. The consultant starts the seminar but is rudely interrupted by Michael who insists on taking over. Michael's version of the seminar turns catastrophic and makes all of the staff and the consultant very angry. The concepts our group will be discussing in this week's episode include ethics at the workplace, essentially showing an example of the behaviors and ethics that do not fit in the workplace as per Michael Scott's example. We have learned from episode two. This episode teaches us what not to do as a manager. Michael Scott again breaks a code of ethical conduct when he when he is doing his Chris Rock impression. Michael says some things that make himself look racist by doing so it does not set a good management example to his employees. The biggest thing to take away from this episode as a manager. Act professional at all times. As manager, you have the obligation to be a leader for your staff as they look up to you for advice. By acting childish, as Michael Scott does, his employees do not respect him as a superior. This is why Michael Scott's office is out of control and the employees do whatever they want. How we executed our project as a team. Together we created our project by executing communication skills, team management skills, and planning who does what and making sure that the projects are done before the deadline date. We learned each other's strengths and weaknesses and played each of those to our advantage as a whole. We used our team's management skills to determine who would be better at performing each task. And we broke it down so someone was doing three to five things each assignment. Conclusion on management. Management is about completing the tasks at hand and by doing them the most efficient way possible. Leadership is organized with others and directions needed to complete the goal, which is the finished product. If a manager implements these strategies correctly, they are setting their team up for success. Let's go over some reflection on concepts. Managerial structure. The office has taught us the importance of the workplace hierarchy. Michael, as a boss, should have the final say in the office activity, but is often undermined and made fun of. Granted, Michael Scott is not the best manager. His decision should be respected and listened to. As a manager of a company, you must hold some sort of authority, which Michael does not. Process structure. The office has shown every employee that makes up gender Mifflin Company. All of the positions combined are what make a team and complete the company as a whole. Michael is not very good at directing others, but everyone in the company seems to know their role and what needs to be accomplished. Controlling. Michael Scott has a tough time controlling his employees the right way. This is one of Michael's biggest challenges as the general manager in the office. You need to control your employees in a way that will better improve your company. You do not want everyone having a free-for-all. Nothing will get accomplished at the end. And as you can see in our last two episodes, Michael Scott has a very difficult time controlling his employees. Recommendation for our future students. Teamwork. We recommend that you establish a group early on. Communication is key in this class and the project, so you want to get to know your strengths and weaknesses as soon as possible. Work on this project as much as you can throughout the semester and don't procrastinate. You'll want to get your work done early so that you aren't stressed out last minute. Work together as a team and don't have one person doing everything. Split things up as much as you can so you are all contributing equally. Nobody in the group wants to be the person doing all the work. <laughs>